In this lesson, we are going to beautify our form so that the user will immediately know which field is invalid. So we'll see what Angular offers us in order to achieve this goal, what kind of CSS classes we can use, and we'll also take a look at a very particular directive. If you remember from a few lessons ago, I showed you that there are some properties that we can use to validate our form. One of these is pristine, we have dirty, we have invalid, and so on. If we inspect one of the inputs, we'll notice that Angular applies a specific set of CSS classes to our input fields that are just replicating whatever is the validation property. So when we have $pristine, we'll have an ng-pristine property. When we have invalid, we'll have an ng-invalid and so on. So we can actually use these properties in our CSS. Inside our code, I've created an empty style file and I've included that regularly inside my index.html at line 14, as you can see. So what I want to do is to add a CSS to highlight in red the input fields that are not valid. So to do that, I'm gonna simply write input.ng-touched, touched, dot ng dash invalid and my rule is gonna be border one pixel solid red a simple one so by defining the rule in this specific way I will be sure that the user has at least touched the input and the validation highlighting will not be present if the user didn't interact with the form in our updated add event form, I'm going to just type one character in the name field and I'm going to click on the description. As you can see, the field is highlighted in red and as soon as I type the next two characters, so it will be between 3 and 50 characters, the input text is again highlighted as it used to be. Description is now being highlighted in red because it's mandatory, so I'll type my desk. And that's gonna be so location whenever I touch that and I select another field will be highlighted in red and so on. If I click on email, which is not a required field, nothing will happen because the invalid class will not be applied. One more thing we want to do is to highlight the text in red as well. For example, please enter the date in the year format we would like to see that text in red so it's clear to the user that the reason why the input text field is highlighted is because of an issue with the validation. Well, there are several ways to do that, but I want to show you a particular directive, which is ng-class. The ng-class directive is a powerful directive when it comes to stylesheet because we can programmatically define what CSS class would be applied. What I mean by that, if we scroll up to our input type name, specifically we're going to add the ng class directive to the containing div, our form group, because it contains both the label, the input itself, and the validation message. And we want all of that to become red whenever there's an error. So we'll type ng class. It takes an expression like most of the built in angular uh, attribute type directive. And we're gonna open and close two curly brackets. And between single quote, we'll type our class name. And I'll use a Twitter bootstrap one, which is has dash error, followed by a colon sign. And now we'll type our validation rule. So it will be had event form, dot event name dot dollar touch and add event form dot event name dot dollar invalid so I'll make sure that only if the user interacts with the input the validation will trigger so angular will parse our expression and will apply the CSS class has error whenever this condition is met if I've done everything properly, we can verify what happens in our page. So we are here, I'll tap the first charter. Angular is showing me the message, 
but it's not applying the class because well it's also okay because we don't want that to become red as long as the user types for the first time but when I click outside the field I click on the description it becomes red and the whole message is and as soon as I type correctly an event name event name everything is back to normal so this is looking all right it's better than it was previously is more immediate to the user and what we need to do is just to apply the same rule to the remaining fields well I want to do something more I want that when the user enters a correct input the input field will be highlighted in green so that it will know that the input is correct to do so we can just extend our ng class and after our first validation we'll add the one comma again single quotes and we'll define the has success class which is another twitter bootstrap class and we'll also define our rule that will be add event form dot event name once again dollar touched and add event form dot event name dollar valid this time once again let's see what happens so if I type event name and they click on the description field now everything gets highlighted in green well that's nice no everything is highlighted in green and if I remove the text it's back to red green red well you can play with the ng class as you prefer well this is the most basic way of using that but you can define your own function inside your controller or in your services to deal with more complex logic maybe you want that when the user enters the input for example let's say that the user is registering to a website and when the user enters the username there will be an HTTP service that is calling a remote uh, backend that will verify if the user is already in use and it will return the validation there are lots of things you can do by combining what you have learned so far well let's move into the next chapter I'll show you a new feature that Angular has introduced, which is ng messages. It's there since a few versions. We're currently using version 1.4, as you might have noticed from the code. While in the first lessons, we were using 1.3.x, but it was just because it was an introduction to the main functions that were already available. But from now on, we'll keep using the latest version.